hơn Everybody's ready. Uh, let's blow the shofar. Chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Shema Yasha Ali Yahawa Allahai Nawa Yahawa Akad. Shema Yasha Ali Yahawa Allahai Nawa Yahawa Akad. Shema Yasha Ali Yahawa Allahai Nawa Yahawa Akad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Brother Ben Yamin. Amalakwat, Waha'ala, Wapa'parath, Wawalamyam, Aman. So we're going to say the Our Father's Prayer together in English. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. First and foremost, we'd like to give all praises and glory to Abinawa, Yahawa, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh So we'd like to give all praises to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahawa in the Hebrew. Bahashem means in the name. Hamashiach means anointed. Yahweh Shai means he's the liberal Yahweh Shai or Yahweh saves. So peace and blessings. I'm your brother, Bishop Josiah, the overseer of True Hebrews and the God out, out here in Brampton, Ontario. And to my left, Zena. my lovely wife, reading with me like always. So today we're going to take a break going over Nehemiah. All right. Um, what we've been doing for the last five, six, about seven years, about seven years, we've been going through the whole Bible, chapter by chapter, breaking it down verse by verse. Right, so we started in the book of Genesis, now we worked our way all the way to Nehemiah because the Bible is not in con uh, chronological order once you get past Second Chronicles, it jumps right. You have to deal with it according to the captivity Babylon or the Syrian Babylon, Medo Persian, and then the Greeks, and then the Romans dealing with the New Testament. So today we will be covering the day of Simon. So this is, how many of y'all raise your hand have heard about the feast or the day of Simon? Raise your hand if you heard about the feast of Simon. Two people? Okay. So it's, it'd be edifying today, right? Con? Con? So when we say con, that means yes or agree in Hebrew. 
Con? Con. Yes. So, uh, so today's lesson will be going over the day of Simon. So let's go to First Maccabees. Right. This is the Bible. Um, if you have the 1611 King James Bible, that's where you'll be able to have all the 81 books. If you don't have the King James Bible, you need something, a red book called the Apocrypha, which was taken out by the Protestants in the 1800s. So let's go to 1 Maccabees chapter 2, and let's start at verse 1. So just a recap, or like for people who know for chapter 1, pretty much... The Medo-Persians was ruling. Alexander, who they called the Great, came into power. He took down the Medo-Persian Empire, and he became the king. He only ruled shortly, and then he died. His four friends who he grew up with, became, the, which was generals, four generals, they, one went north, south, east, and west. You can read about this also in the book of Daniel chapter 11. It goes into uh, detail, which we already covered the book of Daniel. So when uh, his generals got set up, you had something called the Ptolemy uh, dynasty and the Seleucid dynasty, right? So Antiochus, uh, Epiphanes, which was part of the Seleucid dynasty. These people was pretty much fighting over the land of Jerusalem for years, right? So they was get, trying to get a hold of Jerusalem. So let's fast forward. Pretty much King Antiochus, the wicked one, he pretty much is the reason why or set up the, the Greek laws of how we, he pretty much made a law and said, either you join the Greek religion or die. That's pretty much what he set up. So many of the Jews, what do you think they did? They consented. They was like, okay, master, I'm going to be a Greek now. So they did away with the laws, and most of them joined the Greek religion and started to worship the Zeus and Hercules and the Queen of Heaven that was known as Diana. So now some mighty man rose up. And let's see, 1 Maccabees chapter 2, verse 1. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 1, in the Apocrypha. In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, the son of Simeon, a priest of the sons of Jorabrib, from Jerusalem, and dwelt in Modin, and had five sons, Jonan, and called Caddis, Simon, called Thassi, Judas, who was called Maccabeus, Eleazar, called Avaran, and Jonathan, whose surname was Athos. And when he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Judah and Jerusalem, he said, Woe is me, wherefore was I born to see the misery of my people and of the holy city and to dwell there when it was delivered into the hand of the enemy and the sanctuary into the hand of the strangers. Yeah, so remind you, these wicked Greeks was doing orgies in the sanctuary, in the temple. They was sacrificing swine in the temple. They were setting up statues in the temple. So... The Greeks started to war against the Jews. Most of the Jews joined the Greek army, right? And you had this particular, these Levites started to rise up and say, no, we're going to stand. We're not going to bow down to no idol. We're not going to do away with the covenant that the Lord made with our forefathers. We are going to go to war for our nation, right? And so this is what Maccabees is all about, right? Because you had the Greek armies coming, coming up against our people on which day did they used to attack us? The Sabbath, when we're chilling, when we're resting from all of our hard labor. And you have many people that became martyrs, right? They, they died and they refused to even fight. They just said, okay, if they're going to come to us on the Sabbath, we're going to give up our life and die. These brothers was like, no. If they come to us on the even on the Shabbat, these Levites was not playing. They said, no, we have the God-given right to defend ourselves. So the Lord didn't just say we could just turn over and just die. No, we have the right to defend ourselves, which is Torah, right? So let's go to verse 62 of the same chapter, 1 Maccabees chapter 2, um, verse 62 to 69. Verse 62, fear not then the words of a sinful man, 
for his glory shall be dung and worms. Today he shall be lifted up, and tomorrow he shall not be found, because he is returned into his dust, and his thought is come to nothing. Wherefore, you, my sons, be valiant, and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law, for by it shall you obtain glory. So this is the father, before he dies, encouraging his five sons to keep those laws. Don't give in like the rest of our nation did by saying, okay, I don't want to die, so I'm going to join the Greek religion. So we got to have that. We got to be strong in the faith, brothers and sisters. So if someone came to you and said, hey, denounce your God or die, guess what you should do? Just die. It's rather to die and receive that eternal life than to deny the Most High, deny Christ, and receive eternal damnation. Mm -hmm. Everybody understand that? Huh? Huh? Let's continue. So he's telling, he's encouraging them, right? You need that encouragement. That's, a, that's, that's why it's important to be around like-minded people, to build you up. Because they might have been like, oh, you know, what are we going to do? And this is their father. Imagine if their father was weak and be like, oh, we're doomed. I don't know what to do. No, their father was like, no, no, we're going to, we gonna, hey, be, be, be courageous. Be, have that courage. The most I be with you. Just keep the laws. That's what we have to do, right? So let's continue. Verse 64. Wherefore, you, uh, verse 65. And behold, I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. Give ear unto him. He shall be a father unto you. You see that? So now, like, everybody's different. Every son's going to be different. Everybody, brother or sister in this walk, have something unique about yourself. Simon was a man of counsel. He was, he, he was a wise man, right? So he would be like the father unto the rest of the brothers, right? Continue. And behold... He, uh, and behold, I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. Give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. Right? So the scripture says, seek wise counsel. Right? You know, because your, your own mind might tell you to do something that's not right. That's why it's always this, to have the seek wise counsel to see what you're doing. Is it lining up with Torah? Because the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? All right? Continue. As for Judas Maccabeus, he hath been mighty and strong, even from his youth up. Let him be your captain and fight the battle of the people. So Judas Maccabees, that's what Hanukkah is all about, right? The, the Maccabees family and so forth, which uh, we'll be celebrating that later on this year. But Judas was the warrior, right? They always warriors, but he was like the, 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 the big warrior, you know what I mean? That, that one that was a warrior since he was a young uh, 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 a child. And so forth. So father saying, okay, he's in charge. He's in charge of the army. Continue. As for Judas Maccabeus, he hath been mighty and strong even from his youth up. Let him be your captain and fight the battle of the people. Uh -huh. Take also unto you all that observe the law and avenge ye the wrong of your people. You see that? Take, go to battle, go to war with those that's keeping the commandments. Because when you're keeping the commandments and you're with like-minded brothers and sisters, he the most size with you. Don't just choose any brother and sister. It's not about numbers, right? One or two can be way better. I keep the commandments can be way better. It's way better than 100 people that's wicked. You see what I'm saying? It's not about the numbers. It's all about if you are keeping the commandments, right? If the numbers just look good on camera. The numbers just look good on, 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 uh, you know, on pictures. Like, oh, dang, they got a lot of brothers and sisters. But if you're not keeping the commandments, that don't mean nothing, right? commandment so it's, it's very key read that part again that's deep verse 67 take also unto you all those that observe the law and avenge ye the wrong of your people uh-huh recompense fully the heathen and take heed to the commandments of the law so like in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 it talks about this there's there's a balance right so there's a time of peace and a time of war this was the time that we was living in doing like we was in war time war season right so we was He's encouraging them. Yo, this is time for us to go to war. Go ahead. So he blessed them. So he blessed them and was gathered to his fathers. Okay, so let's jump from Mac. Uh, let's jump to First Maccabees now, chapter five. So that's why it's important. Right? We we were talking about that last night. You know, over the uh, the Zoom meet that we had um, for the opening up of the Shabbat about how pleasant is it to dwell in unity, right? with brothers and sisters. It's a beautiful thing. It was going over Psalms 133, right? It's a beautiful thing to gather with like-minded people, right? To be unified with that. Let's go. First Maccabees chapter 5, verse 17. And then we're going to jump a little bit. Verse 17. 
The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 5, verse 17. Then said Judas unto Simon his brother, Choose thee out of out men, and go and deliver thy brethren that are in Galilee. For I and Jonathan, my brother, will go into the country of Galad. So you see, so pretty much Judas and his brother Simon separated. They went different locations. They had different ties. Okay, you go there and fight that battle. I'm going to go over here and fight the people over here. Jump to verse 20. Verse 20. Now unto Simeon, where, now unto Simon, were given 3,000 men to go into Galilee, and unto Judas, 8,000 men for the country of Galad. Uh -huh. Then went Simon into Galilee, where he fought many battles with the heathen, so that the heathen were discomfited by him. So these are our brothers, right, fighting against these other nations that's trying to war up against us. These people, they pretty much have control over our land, right? There's, Israel is a lot bigger than what people think. You know, I know it looks, if you look at a map right now, you see it's like a little dot on the map. No, that's new Israel, what they did. They actually made Israel a lot smaller. Israel actually reached a lot further, right? And um, so you had heathens and then you had Israelites also who joined the Greek armies and became Greeks. And they was also following, uh, fighting against their own brother, the Jews. So you had traitors amongst your own people, just like you have traitors to, today, right? A lot of the people that was responsible for killing, like like, like like they say, like Malcolm X or something, they set up their own people, had their own people to do it, and so forth. So it's always going to be a traitor amongst the people. You had, you, you know, you had a person that betrayed Christ. Think about it. It's always that person that Satan would try to use don't be that person con uh let's jump to first maccabees so now we're seeing the picture right so simon's he's going the war and 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 uh galilee and brother jewish is uh judas is going to uh to war and Galad. so now let's go to first maccabees chapter 9 verse 17 so we just paint a picture right so first maccabees chapter 9 verse 17 through 24 the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 9, verse 17. Whereupon there was a sore battle, insomuch as were slain on both parts. Judas was also killed, and the remnant fled. You see that? So now, at this particular time, Judas Maccabees got killed in battle, right? In the book of, I think, Isaiah 57, it talks about righteous man perishing or dying, right? So... A lot of times, a lot of things happen in our people's lives and so forth. It doesn't necessarily mean if a person died, that person was wicked. You have righteous people that do die, even in battle. King Josiah was one of the righteous kings in the Bible. He even died in battle, and he was a righteous man that reestablished re the law to Israel, right? Uh, let's continue. Verse 19. Then Jonathan and Simon took Judas, their brother, and buried him in the sepulcher of his fathers in Modin. Uh-huh. Moreover, they bewailed him, and all Israel made great lamentation for him, and mourned many days, saying, How is this valiant man fallen that delivered Israel? Right, because he was a warrior. So they're like, man, it sucks that this brother that's a warrior, that he died in battle. Right? Go ahead. He was pretty much that, the Lord's battle axe and weapon of war. Right? Trust me, he was killing a lot of people. He did his, he, whatever the Lord had him to do, he fulfilled his course. He went to war, right, and righteousness. Continue. Now, therefore, after the death of Judas, uh, verse 22, and as for the other things concerning Judas and his wars and the noble acts which he did and his greatness, they are not written, for they were very, very many. So he done so many things that you can't even put in a book. Like, it's too many things to even write about. Just like, you know, like they said, like Christ did so many miracles that the earth can't even contain it. That's kind of like what Judas did when it, ha when, when it went to war. It was too many fights and battles he won, right? And you already know the Israelite sisters was there singing a song. Hey, Judas, you know? <laughs> kind of like King Saul and David. Let's continue. <laughs> Verse 23. Now, after the death of Judas, the wicked began to put forth their heads in all the coasts of Israel. And there arose up all such as wrought iniquity. So because the... The warrior, everybody, like, come on, everybody feared Judas Maccabee. That They called him the hammer for a reason. That man put it down, right? He went to war. So now, this is the heathens getting boastful. Oh, yeah, yeah, hey, we killed Judas now. We good. We about to go to war. We about to conquer the Jews now. We, uh, and, and they start to do even more wickedness and so forth. So now, hold on. If, one of the, if the main leader 
dies, now the people who are supposed to just scatter, what are you supposed to do? You got to send up somebody else, right? Let's continue. In those days also was there a very great famine, by reason whereof the country revolted and went with them. Uh -huh. Jump to verse 28 to 33. Verse 28, for this cause, all Judas's friends came together and said unto Jonathan, since thy brother Judas died, we have no man like him to go forth against our enemies and Bacchites and against them of our nation that are adversaries to us. You see, our own nation became adversaries to us. What is an adversary? Enemy. An enemy. Why do you think Christ in the New Testament says, love your enemy? We had our own nation became our enemy, was warring against us. So just imagine the same people that was supposed to be your brother, your sister, is now have an evil eye towards their brother. Going, I've been through Haiti right now. And, and Haiti, right? And all throughout our people, in the States, in Canada, everywhere our people is at, our people are killing each other. Over what? People are killing each other over colors in the States and up in Canada. Mm. What, what block you at? Oh, this is my block. Yeah. I belong here. And then the cops come and everybody run. I'm like, that was your block. You know, <laughs> why are you running? If it's your block, stand up for your block. I have seen the count countless times brothers run. But if it's other brothers, they like, yeah, I killed that man and all this stuff. But when it comes to the other nations, our people afraid, weak. We don't have that warrior mentality no more because that's that slave mentality a lot of us have. Like the right? massacre. Huh? The massacre that just occurred. Yeah, the massacre that's happening, right? You got these white people, hey, brothers and sisters. This is happening a lot in the States. This this is like, it was even happening in my city. White people coming around shooting up places where a, 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 a bunch of black people was gathering. But it wasn't televised. It, only if you know people there, then you would know. But if you don't know nobody in the States or, or, or these places that's happening, you won't know about it because not everything's gonna hit C, uh, you know, CNN or whatever. So they pick and choose which one they want to use. Okay, we're going to use this one in Buffalo. We are saying and so forth. But these things be happening. Lynching is still be happening. All this stuff, slave trade is still going on in parts of Africa and the Middle East amongst black people. Amongst, like, this is still happening to this day. Nothing changed, family. Let's continue. Verse 30. Now, therefore, we have chosen thee this day to be our prince and our captain in his stead, that thou mayest fight our battles. Uh -huh. Upon this, Jonathan took the governance upon him at that time and rose up instead of his brother Judas. So now Jonathan is in charge, right? Judas died, he's in charge now. Continue. Verse 32, but when Bacchides got knowledge thereof, he sought to slay him. Then Jonathan and Simon his brother and all that were with him perceived that, fled the, perceiving that, fled into the wilderness of Thico and pitched their tents by the water of the pool of Asphar. Right, because now you have to, you gotta have a little meeting, you have a little council, right? Your, your main brother just died, that was the warrior, right? He was the one that was put in charge. Now they fled, okay, now we had to recruit. We, now we have to like gather together. So they gathered in the mountains. They was hiding in the mountains and so forth, recruit, and then go back to war, right? That's using wisdom. So let's jump, or let's jump to, or go to verse 35. Verse 35. To 42. Now Jonathan had sent his brother John, a captain of the people, to pray his friends and Nabathites, that they might leave them their carriage, which was much. But the children of Jibri came out of Medaba and took John and all that he had and went their way with it. Uh -huh. Verse 37. After this came word to Jonathan and Simon his brother that the children of Jibri, Jambri made a great marriage and were bringing the bride from Nadabatha with great train as the daughter as being the daughter of one of the great princes of canaan so they pretty much took our brother john one of the brothers of uh judas took him killed him right and the same people that were responsible had the nerve to have a big old wedding feast and they're up there probably marching with the band boom 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 and, and going down the road and we and then jonathan and simon heard about it like hold on Oh, these are the people that are responsible for killing our brother? Okay, let's see what happened. Go ahead. Therefore, they remembered John, their brother, and went up and hid themselves under the covert of the mountain, uh -huh. where they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, there was much ado and great carriage. And the bridegroom came forth and his friends and brethren to meet them with drums and with instruments of music and many weapons. Uh -huh. Then Jonathan and they that were with him arose up against them from the place where they lay in ambush and made slaughter of them in such sort. As <laughs> many fell down dead 
and the remnant fled into the mountain and they took all their spoils. Thus was the marriage turned into a mourning and the noise of their melody into lamentation. So when they had avenged fully the blood of their brother, they turned again to the marsh of Jordan. You see that? So they wasn't just going to allow their brother just to die like that, right? He wasn't supposed to die. But you had a lot of people. Just imagine, you know, like in, in the movies they show, like they'll send like an ambassador or somebody to go relay a message. Mm -hmm. you, you don't supposed to kill that person, right? But uh, I think that showed that in the movie 300. Yeah. When the dude came and then he was like, this is Spartan and kicked the dude down and so forth. You ain't supposed to do that. You know what I mean? And so forth. But these people didn't um, follow those rules. They killed the brother, so he revenged his brother. So let's go to now 1 Maccabees chapter 12. 1 Maccabees chapter 12. So we're seeing a few brothers now dead, right? So we're working our way through this timeline, seeing, okay, how did Simon become that leader, right? So John is brother. Uh, the brother John is dead, and also Judas is dead. So First Maccabees chapter twelve. Um, pretty much, we don't, uh, we're gonna start at verse thirty nine. But before that, pretty much Jonathan, he pretty much uh, made an alliance with the Romans. Think about it, the Romans. Who was the most wicked kingdom that Israel was? The Romans. But at this time, the Romans was rocking with the Jews. They was helping us. Hmm. They help us until they don't need us no more. Doesn't that sound familiar? They use us and abuse us until they say, okay, we don't need you no more. So we made an alliance. So the Jews made an alliance with the Romans and also with the Spartans. And we found out that the Spartans of the Lacedonians was related by blood to the Jews. So that movie with the Spartans and the greatest army supposedly that ever rocked, that was the movie 300, that was Israelites. Mm -hmm. Those was brothers, right? How, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> that was brothers. Wow. And that's what the scriptures let us know, right? So let's let's go First Maccabees chapter 12. Matter of fact, uh, just read verse 20 and 21 just so the brothers and sisters will see. Verse 20, Arius, the king of the Lacedonians, Lacedonians, to Onias, the high priest, greeting. So Lacedonians, that's where uh, the Spartans dwelt, right? Continue. It is found in writing that the Lacedonians and the Jews are brethren and that they are of the stock of Abraham. So the Lacedonians and the Jews are brethren. And we'll see who those Lacedonians is. Let's jump down to verse uh, 39. First Maccabees chapter 12, verse 39. Now, Tryphon went about to get the kingdom of Asia and to kill Antiochus the king, that he might set the crown upon his own head. Uh -huh. Howbeit he was afraid that Jonathan would not suffer him and that he would fight against him. Wherefore, he sought a way to take Jonathan that he might kill him. So he removed and came to Bethshan. Verse 41. Then Jonathan went out to meet him with 40,000 men <laughs> chosen for the battle and came to Bethshan. Uh -huh. Now when Typhon saw that Jonathan came with, such a, with so great a force, he durst not to stretch his hand against him, but received him honorably and commanded him unto all his friends and gave him gifts and commanded his men of war to be as obedient unto him as to himself. So remind you, this wicked man, Trifon, was trying to kill this brother. But when he seen Jonathan coming with mighty men, dang, they with the Spartans and with the Jews, these are warriors. Remind you, who the best fighters in the world to this day? Us, mm -hmm. in the boxing or wherever you want to be. We the, we, the, we the top notch. So when they seen them, they was like, oh, shoot. So instead of him saying, going to, trying to go to war, he was a coward, but a deceitful coward. He tried to play it off and make it seem like, no, 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 I don't want no war with you. We are friends. We are buddies. I'm going to give you gifts. Don't the scripture says, never trust thy enemies. Never trust thy enemies. As long as you allow your enemies to come in and so forth, that's, that was Israel's fallen point always. We always say, oh, let's make alliance. Let's do this. And then we started to go astray. So that's why we were supposed to be a holy nation. What's the word holy mean? 
set apart. apart. It's the reason why the Lord told us to be set apart from these other nations. Because every time they join hand in hand, they always stabbed us in the back. So Jonathan, being a brother, saying, okay, these people, they don't want, they, they want to do me good. They, they come in with gifts. Don't the scripture say it talks about gifts? What does a gift do? Destroy your, uh, your heart. It destroys you, right? So you will start to think, oh, these people love me. They give me gifts. Let's see what happens. Um, let's go to, jump down to verse 39. Are oh, you ready to read that? All the way to 53, you read that? To 53, I'm sorry. 53. Yes, to 53. Okay. Um, verse... 44, my question. 44. Unto oh. uh, Jonathan also he said, Why hast thou put all this people to of so great trouble, seeing there is no war betwixt us? You see what this, this heathen said? Why are you got all these people gathered? There's no, I don't, there's no beef between us. <laughs> I don't have no problems with you. <laughs> Never trust thy enemies. Continue. Verse 45. Therefore, send them now home again and choose a few men to wait on thee. You hear this, man? <laughs> send, you got 40, you came 40,000 strong? Man, send them home. We brothers, we friends. All right? You want some chicken? I got some chicken. I <laughs> got some chicken for you. I'm like, yeah, bro, it's like chicken. I some curry goat. Got something for you, right? Continue. And come thou with me to Ptolemais, for I will give it to thee, and the rest of the strongholds and forces, and all that have any charge. As for me, I will return and depart, for this is the cause of my coming. You see, that's a reminder. The Seleucid dynasty and the Ptolemy dynasty was fighting. This man, uh, Typhoon, was part of the Seleucid dynasty, right? So he's saying, no, come with me. I, I got you. We about to go to war against but told me now we're gonna we're gonna conquer that we're gonna give it to you you know what i mean we're gonna yeah you we're gonna be good i'm gonna just go back home because i really don't want this egypt because uh pretty much told me to have uh control over egypt right so he's like oh well, i don't want this place anyway man i'm gonna go back home but i'm gonna do this for you we're gonna fight this battle and i'm gonna win it for you hmm never trust thy enemy let's see what happened go ahead verse 46 so jonathan believing him did as he bade uh-huh and sent away his host. He sent away the armies. Who the went into the land them. of Judah. Uh-huh. So they went back home. And what happened? Verse 47. And with himself he retained but 3,000 men, of whom he sent 2,000 into Galilee, and 1,000 went with him. So he only got a 1,000 men. And the heathen like, <laughs> yes. So it went from 40,000 to 1,000. That's a big difference, family. That's a big difference. Go ahead. Now, as soon as Jonathan entered into Ptolemais. What verse you have? I'm sorry, babe. Verse 48. Come on. Now, as soon as Jonathan entered into Ptolemais, they of Ptolemais shut the gates and took him. And all them that came with him, they slew with the sword. So they end up slaughtering them. Why? Because he trusted the enemy. Go ahead. Verse 49, then Typhron, a host of footmen and horsemen into Galilee and into the great plain to destroy all Jonathan's company. So now he's not just trying to destroy them. He's trying to destroy all their company now. So now he's like, yes, we got them. That's why it's the, like, we, that's why like you have to use wisdom, brothers and sisters, right? It's a reason why the Lord said he has severing us from other people. Gather with like-minded brothers and sisters. Be with your brothers and sisters. Because when you allow people to come in, you can be allowing some potted. Oh, yeah, they're here. They gather here. Ten four. Yep, they're here. Yep. So anything. So that's what our, the enemy was always doing. And if you notice, too, all the black organizations that started, like, in the States with the Black Panthers and these different things, the, a lot of the reason why they was destroyed or they, they, they failed is because they started allowing other nations to come in. And they start to send, send agents and so forth. And that's how the, they, a lot of these people fail, right? So we have to make sure using wisdom, no, never trust thy enemy. Let's continue. Verse 50. But when they knew that Jonathan and they that were with him were taken and slain, they encouraged one another and went close together, prepared to fight. Uh-huh. They, therefore, that followed upon them, perceiving that they were ready to fight for their lives, turned back again, whereupon they all came into the land of Judah peacefully, and there they bewailed Jonathan 
and them that were with him. And they were sore afraid, wherefore all Israel made great lamentation. Then all the heathen that were round about them sought to destroy them. For, said they, they have no captain, nor any to help. Now therefore let us make war upon them. And take away their remor their memorial from amongst men. You see that, brothers and sisters? We they feared Jonathan. He came forty thousand strong. And he said, No. He was able to deceive our brother into thinking, no, send them home. We good. You only need a few thousand. Matter of fact, just just, just rock with your thousand. Mm -hmm. And by him doing that and listening to that heathen, that destroyed him and the men that he was with. So that's why the scriptures tells us never trust our enemy, right? And don't allow that gift, because the, the gift can really destroy you, because you will start to feel, you, you will start to sympathize for a person and so forth, and be like, oh, this person is really a truly good person. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine another nation come here and be like, hey guys, you know, I got a million dollars for each and every one of us. They're like, oh my gosh, he's so the, he's the best. <laughs> but like, what, is, what does it come with? What is he plotted? You see what I'm saying? So we have to use wisdom and really try to see what is going on, mm -hmm. right? So that's why we have to be a set apart people. So um, Feast of Simon. let's continue. Verse, uh, First Maccabees chapter 13. So now Jonathan is killed, John is killed, and also Judas is killed. So First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 1 through 11. So now we're going to get into about Simon, how he became the leader. Now when Simon heard that Chiphon had a, gathered together a great host to invade the land of Judea and destroy it, and saw that the people were in great trembling and fear, he went up to Jerusalem and gathered the people together uh -huh. and gave them exhortation, saying, Ye yourselves know what great things I and my brethren and my father's house have done for the laws and the sanctuary, the battles also and troubles which we have seen. By reason whereof, all my brethren are slain for Israel's sake, and I am left alone. You see that? So now he's acknowledging that all his four brothers died. He was the last brother to be alive. Four of his brothers died in battle, in war. So he's the only brother left. But they didn't just die for themselves. We can't be a selfish people. We got to look out for our neighbor. We got to look out for our brothers and sisters and be able to fight for one another and so forth on our, our nation cause. So they wasn't just dying in vain. They died for a cause. Right. And they died to about upholding the laws and to defend their nation from the from the enemy. Go ahead. Verse five. Now, therefore, be it far from me that I should spare my own life in any time of trouble, for I am no better than my brethren. Uh -huh. Doubtless, I will avenge my nation and the sanctuary and our wives and our children for all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of very malice. And that's what and that's the sad thing about it, brothers and sisters, because to this day. Right. Nothing changed. The nations are still trying to destroy the 12 tribes of Israel. They're trying to destroy us. So that's why we got to use wisdom. Everything we do, it's not, a, it's not a coincidence or not a surprise when you're hearing about people running up into places, shooting up black people and all these different things. This has been happening since, I mean, for thousands of years. The nations have been warring against us. It's just now Esau's in power, right? So this is the last kingdom to rule. And who got next? We got, we got next. Hallelujah. Continue. Verse 7. Now as, the, uh, now as soon as the people heard these words, their spirits revived. You see that? So he's encouraging his brothers, right? He's encouraging them because obviously they just mourned for the, these brothers that died. These are, these are great men, great warriors. And so he revived them by giving them encouragement, Right? And understanding, like, no, these people didn't just die for in vain. These guys, they died for a cause. Let's continue to fight, right? Because if they just gave up and just say, okay, let's just go home, they, they, those brothers, they, they died for no reason then, mm -hmm. right? They died for no reason because it's like, hold on, what was the purpose? No, we're trying to regain back our land. That was the whole purpose, trying to get back Jerusalem and trying to take all the idols that the heathens put in Jerusalem out. But guess what? I mean, right now in Jerusalem, right now, when me and my wife went over there, oh, there's so many idols over there. Oh, my goodness. It's back idols everywhere. So that's why we're like, we don't care about that Jerusalem. We're looking for what? New Jerusalem. Because it's full of idols and pigs and homosexuals. The biggest homosexual parade in the world is in Jerusalem. How about that? And Tel Aviv. Go ahead. My Verse queen. 8. And they answered with a loud voice saying, Thou shalt be our leader instead of Judas and Jonathan thy brother. 
fight thou our battles, and whatsoever thou commandest us, we will do. So then he gathered together all the men of war, and made haste to finish the walls of Jerusalem, and he fortified it round about. He also sent Jonathan the son of Absalom, and with him a great power, to Job, who casting out them that were there, remained therein. You see, so so they, they pretty much promoted Simon to now be the leader, right? It's important to have a person that's a wise and, 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 and fierce leader. You can't just have a weak leader. You can't just have a weak uh, person leading you. So remind you, these brothers was warriors, but even they even got weak for the moment and discouraged because why? Their brothers was dying, right? And that's what happens in war. People die, right? People get killed, but we have to continue to fight, right? So we know Hamashak Yahushai, he's coming to fight for us. Mm -hmm. Right? This world's gonna get crazy any any minute now. This whole world's gonna get turned upside down, right? And this is why, you know, Christ said, yo, if it was so, you know, they would pretty much destroy all of us. You know, but for the elect's sake, it, it, it's not gonna be so. So the Lord's coming to fight for the elect's sake, right? And we just pray that the most side that we're part of this elect that make it, that be get that get called up, right? When that seven trumpet uh sound. Con? Let's continue. Verse 25. Yeah, let's jump to verse 25 to 28. Then sent Simon and took the bones of Jonathan, his brother, and buried them in Modin, the city of his fathers. And all Israel made great lamentation for him and bewailed him many days. Simon also built a monument upon the sepulcher of his fathers and his brethren and raised it aloft to the site and hewn stone behind and before. Moreover, he set up seven pyramids, one against another, for his father and his mother and his four brethren. And in these he made a cunning devices about that which he had great pillars. And upon the pillars he made all the armor for a perpetual memory. And by the armor ships carved that they might be, that they might be, hello, 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 shalom, that they might be, that they might be, where am I, first, Oh, that's another baby. Uh, verse to, to, okay. to verse twenty-eight. So pretty much, um, he set up seven pyramids: one for his father, one for his mother, one for his uh, uh, one for each for his four brothers. So that's six. Who was the seventh one for? For himself. How did he know how to build the pyramids? Hmm. You know, how you go online, they go to those sign channels, and they be like, oh, who built the pyramids? It was aliens. They came down because nobody. This right here in the scriptures show us. Even in the book of Exodus, we was building, right? So this shows that we are responsible for building the pyramids, right? And this is, this is, this is, thousand, this is like over, a, like a, a damn near a thousand years um, after we was in Egypt. Over a thousand years. From the time that we was in Exodus all the way until Maccabees, this is over a thousand years. Well over a couple of thousand years. And guess what? Our people still had the knowledge of building the pyramids. Mm -hmm. Right? We are great people. So let's jump to um, verse 31 to 53 to get into the day of Simon. So so now everybody have an understanding. Judas, boom, got set up. Up, he died. John died. Um and the rest of the brothers die. Simon is, is pretty much the last brother to be alive, right? And so let's see, verse 31 to 53. Verse 31. Now Tryphon dealt deceitfully with the young king Antiochus and slew him. And he reigned in his stead and crowned himself king of Asia and brought a great calamity upon the land. Then Simon built up the strongholds in Judea and fenced them about with high towers and great walls and gates and bars and laid upon victuals therein. Moreover, Simon chose men and sent the king Demetrius to end to the end he should give the land an immunity, because all that Tryphon did was to spoil. Up unto whom King Demetrius answered and wrote after this manner King Demetrius unto Simon the high priest, a friend of kings, as also unto the elders and the nations of the Jews, sending greetings. Verse 37, the crown, gold, the golden crown and the scarlet robe which he sent unto us, we have received, and we are ready to make a steadfast peace with you. Yea, 
and to write unto our offices to confirm the immunities which we have granted. And whatsoever covenants we have made with you shall stand, and that the strongholds which ye have built shall be your own. As for any oversight of fault, com of fault committed unto this day, we forgive it. And the crown tax also which ye owe us. And if there were any other tribute paid in Jerusalem, it shall be no more paid. And it took the, and look who are meet among you to be in our court. Let them be enrolled and let there be peace betwixt us. Thus the yoke of the heathen was taken away from Israel in the 170th year. Then the people of Israel began to write in their instruments and contracts in the first year of Simon the high priest, the governor of the leader of the Jews. You see that? So now Simon has become the leader of the nation of Israel, being that high priest, right? So we mind you, we're making alliances with the Romans, right? Let's continue. Verse 43. In those days, Simon camped against Gaza and besieged it around about. He made also an engine of war and set it by the city and battled and battered a certain tower and took it. Verse 44. And they that were in the engine leapt into the city, whereupon there was a great uproar in the city. So remind you too, we're not gonna, we can't go over all the Maccabees, but remind you in these cities was a lot of traders within the city that Israelites that took money to pretty much um, let the captives or, or those that got captured and captured and um, captured in war and was holding the in the different castles or whatever, you had Jews being paid to let them go. And so a lot of the time the people would hear about it and they was, and they were like, okay, you let these you a traitor? You let your you let the enemies go? And so they end up slaying their they end up slaying the traitor, right? Continue. In so much, verse 45, as the people of the city rent their clothes and climbed upon the walls with their wives and children and cried a loud voice, beseeching Simon to grant them peace. Uh -huh. Verse 46, and they said, deal not with us according to our wickedness, but according to thy mercy. So you have, like I said, so these particular people, they're crying out to Simon, like, I know we was wicked, we was a traitor, blah, blah, blah. Please have mercy upon us, right? I know we deserve death, but... Please have mercy. Let's see what happened. Go so ahead. Simon was appeased towards them and fought no more against them, but put them out of the city and cleansed the houses wherein the idols were, and so entered into it with songs and thanksgiving. So after they cleansed the house, they start to sing praise to the Most High, right? So that's how you know, like even today, we all want that mercy from the Most High. We all want that, right? We want that wrath to pass over at each and every one of us. Because that wrath is coming. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been coming, but it's going to get worse. And we we pray that the Most High have mercy upon us as Christ sitting on that mercy seat. And that he plead for us. We just hope that we do our part. That's what we have to do. We have to do our part by doing and keeping the commandments to the best of our ability. Striving for perfection, right? Each and every day. Continue, my love. Verse 48. Yea, he put all uncleanness out of it and placed such men there as would keep the law. And made it stronger than it was before, and built therein a dwelling place for himself. Uh -huh. Verse 49. They also of the tower in Jerusalem were kept so straight that they could neither come forth, nor go into the country, nor buy, nor sell. Wherefore they were in great distress for want of victuals, and great number of them perished through famine. Uh -huh. Then cried they to Simon, beseeching him to be at one of them, which thing he granted them. And when he had put them out of then, from thence, he cleansed the tower from pollutions and, and entered into it three and twentieth day of the second month. In so, the, so the second month, the 23rd day of, of the month, that's where we're at right now. Go ahead. In the hundred and seventieth and first year with thanksgiving and branches of palm trees and with harps and cymbals and with voils and hymns and songs because there was destroyed a great enemy out of Israel. You see that? So the day of Simon, or the feast of Simon is all about rejoicing of what our forefathers did during the time of the Greeks, how we regained the city. Hanukkah was more about regaining the temple, but now this is regaining the city and all the idols and pollution that was there got kicked out. And now in the second month, on the 23rd day of the second month, they had a feast. Continue. 
verse 52. He ordained also that that day should be kept every year with gladness. Moreover, the hill of the temple that was by the tower he made stronger than it was. And there he dwelt himself with his company. And when Simon saw that John and his son were valiant man, was a valiant man, he made him captain of all the hosts and dwelt in Gazara. So pretty much after Simon eventually died and so forth, and he set up his sons to be in, in charge, right? So that's what the Feast of Simon is all about, brothers and sisters, is about regaining the land and, and destroying all the idols and pollution, getting rid of it. And setting up people that was going to fear the most side by doing what? Keeping the commandments. And they had a feast, a celebration of that. And how did they celebrate it? With songs and hymns and and mm -hmm. and, and praising the most high. And that's exactly what we're about to do. Turn up for the most high. Khan. So all praises and glory to Abinawa, Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. So peace and blessings, brothers and sisters that's tuning in on Facebook and YouTube. Hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day of Simon. We about to turn up and have some food and games and and praise the most high. Khan. So Shalom family. Hallelujah.